up, beautiful lovelies? It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making what is called the Mississippi Pot Roast. Apparently, back in 2020, in the late fall, it was all over the internet and I missed it. I learned about this from an article that I read recently by Kevin Pang in America's Test Kitchen about luxurious ramen and how to make it so by using mayonnaise and garlic. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link down below. It's absolutely totally worth making. At any rate, in that article, Kevin mentions the Mississippi pot roast, and I said, what is that? Clicked on it. Apparently, it's simply a pot roast that's made in a slow cooker. Okay, that's fine. But what's interesting is that it's made with just a handful of ingredients, including a jar of pepperoncini peppers, instant ranch powder, gravy powder, and a stick of butter. That's it, in a crock pot for hours and hours, meat of course and then you're supposed to get something that's supposed to be nearly life-changing nearly it's supposed to be absolutely incredible people love it so according to southern living this recipe has its origins from mississippi it was invented by robin chapman who lives in ripley mississippi it was shared in a cookbook and called the mississippi pot roast or mississippi roast and the rest as they say is history it has tons and tons and tons of views all over the internet and i'm mostly intrigued about what this is going to taste like because it's got Five ingredients, right? Butter, sauce packet, sauce packet, pepperoncinis, and butter, right? No time to cook it because it's cooking while you're at work and it's supposed to be amazing. So let's go ahead and make a Mississippi pot roast. First thing we're gonna need is a crock pot, which I happen to have right here. So I've got a three pound truck roast here and this is the cut of meat that is recommended for this particular pot roast. Make sure you get that little part off. And I personally love a chuck roast for pot roast. Full of fat, which I love, and it cooks down to be very, very tender, succulent, juicy. Love it. So, I'm gonna wash my hands. Whenever we're working with raw meat, we wanna make sure we wash our hands to prevent cross-contamination. Next, let's do our sauce packets. We've got au jus gravy and ranch dressing mix, right? This. In goes the ranch mix. And next, we're gonna add some au jus gravy. So this is used to make a French dip sandwich. Gosh, that ranch packet smells good. Now we're gonna add the gravy mix. And then some pepperoncini peppers. These are pepperoncini peppers. So they're pickled peppers. They're very mild, not too spicy at all. So we add half the brine, half the jar of brine. And the recipes vary in terms of how many peppers you want to add based on your own level of spiciness. Some people add the entire jar. Some say to add six and I'm gonna add, I don't know, I like spice, but I'm gonna add, how many have I added so far? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm gonna add half a jar of the pepperoncini brine and half a jar of peppers. So that's about 12 pickled peppers. Wash my fingers again. And for the final touch, I'm gonna add one stick of butter right on top. Doink. Now we're gonna cover this up. And if you've got a lot of time, put this on low for eight to 10 hours. If you wanna speed this up, we're gonna put it on high for five to six hours. So I'm just gonna let this go and I'll see you in a little bit and we'll see how the Mississippi pot roast tastes. Alrighty, see you in a little bit. <laughs> wow, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting looking. I think it's gonna be good. Alrighty, see you in a bit. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back with the Mississippi roast. So this has been cooking for eight hours. I reduced the temperature down to low midway because I need to extend my cooking time because life happens. But this should be fork tender after five to six hours on high if you need to speed things up a little bit. But I cannot wait to taste this. And there it is. <laughs> 
isn't it amazing how much juice is produced by the roast itself? And it smells great. Let me get a fork. And let's go ahead and shred this. It shreds apart very nicely. Look at that. And there's plenty of juice to put over potatoes or rice. I'm just gonna taste it straight up. So let's give this a taste. Okay. Fish some of this out along with a pepper because I love pepperoncinis. All right, I'm gonna cut my pepper and we'll have a bite with that too. But let's just have a bite of the meat itself. Alrighty, here we go. My first taste of Mississippi pot roast. Itadakimasu. Very tasty. We have a packet of gravy mix and a packet of ranch. So there's plenty of salt in there. And this has had plenty of time for those flavors to absorb into the meat. The meat is very tender. Mm hmm And I'm not feeling any heat at all. So I think, oh, mm. the peppers are nice and briny and salty and they've absorbed a lot of those flavors from the ranch packet and the au jus. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It definitely needs to go with some potatoes or some rice, I feel, because it is quite salty, but the meat is super tender. I think this would be a great filling for tacos or fajitas or anything, really. It's delicious. Super easy to make, too, and it couldn't be any easier to make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm not detecting any heat at all. I only used half a bottle of the brine and about 12 pepperoncini peppers, and I'm not detecting any kind of heat. But I did get mild pepperoncinis. Maybe you can get hotter ones if you want more spice. But I quite like the brine added to this recipe. I feel like it balances out the salt a bit. And cooking with a crock pot couldn't be any easier. You just dump everything in, cover it, plug it in, set it, and then come back to a full meal that's cooked and waiting for you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Super easy and tasty. Mm -hmm. Yum. Mm. I think this would go really well with roasted potatoes or mashed potatoes to soak up some of that gravy or sauce in there. Yeah, we also included a stick of butter in here and surprisingly, it doesn't feel overly heavy, even though we used a cut of meat that contains a lot of fat in itself. Yeah, it's quite good. I like it. If you wanted to remove any of the extra fat, I think that would be a really simple thing to do. Just cool this down and then refrigerate it. And then the next day you could just scrape off that layer of fat and then you could eliminate a lot of the extra fat in this roast. But absolutely delicious and so stinking easy to make. There you have it, the Mississippi pot roast. It is totally up to the hype, but it is salty in my opinion and definitely needs to be accompanied with some kind of side dish, something starchy to absorb some of that salt. Or I would even go as far as to say to reduce the amount of ranch and au jus sauce that you put in here. Maybe use three quarters of a packet instead of a whole packet. So it won't be quite as salty. My roast was also a little less than three pounds. If you're using a four pound roast, I think then a full packet would be appropriate. But for the size of my roast, it's a little bit too salty for me. So there you have it. My opinions and thoughts on the Mississippi pot roast. Super easy, simple, and pretty tasty. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website for a printable version of this recipe and like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Pot roast time, pot roast time. Now I'm gonna go make some potatoes.